Hello YouTube, I'm back again with the ill behavior. It's Gareth Beavis here. Um, we're here to bring you the information about the HTC One A9. Now you remember this from John McCann being outside, showing you this phone in a little bit of an early preview. Now we're here for the big review, the big trying it out for a couple of weeks, learning all about it, finding out its nuances, its crevices, its cracks, and this is the phone we're gonna review properly. Now, in terms of introduction, you know, you know what the HTC One A9 is all about. Yeah, okay, it looks a bit like an iPhone, but really this is a massive phone for HTC. This is a company that's, with the One M9, didn't really hit the heights it wanted to. The One M8 was a brilliant phone, the One M9, not so much. So the A9 itself really needs to be a big hitter. So where does it fit into the market? Now, this is the confusing part because the HTC One A9 is a bigger phone in the US than it is in parts of Europe as well. So for instance, in the US, you've got three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, and it's cheaper. In the UK, for instance, it's a lot more expensive, it's got a lower spec, and it, it's sort of a more of a mid-ranger. So with that in mind, it is quite difficult to review, but we've got the 32 gigabyte, three gigabytes of RAM version. It's the best out there, so let's check it out and find out what it's really capable of doing. HTC has got a really great heritage when it comes to designing phones. It, it actually bought the company that started making its really nice metal phones all those years ago and that's pervaded, that still exists. So as we can see here, it's, it is an all-metal design. It's really nice with these polycarbonate strips because that lets you get the antenna out, it gets the signal through so you can actually use the phone as a phone itself. On the top here, that's allowing for GPS. Again, another cutout, but mostly it's metal. It feels really nice in the hand. As you can see here, the power button and the rocker button on the side. I love how rigid it is here because that means when you're holding it in the hand like that, you can really feel it without having to look. It's a really great feature and it's a really nice element to have. The interface itself, you know, it's HTC, it's Sense, but it's got a little bit of marshmallow in there as well because Google and HTC got together and they said, you know what, let's make a phone that's a little bit more Nexus but still has that HTC heritage. So you've got things like Blink Feed here, but you've also got just a little bit more of a Google feeling through it. So you've got the notification shade, which is very much SOC Android. It looks exactly as you'd expect on a Nexus phone. This is a phone that looks exactly how you'd expect it to if you're thinking Google plus Nexus plus HTC in one go. The HTC One A9 comes with a new feature for HTC. It's a fingerprint scanner. As you can see, it's on the bottom here and a quick thumbprint in, and it's very, very quick. In fact, we've tested this with a couple of different bits and pieces, even using gloves, you know, latex gloves. This thing is very fast and it works very, very quickly and it's accurate as well. So turn it off, turn it back on again, and you're right in straight away. It's just, it's very quick and there's no touching involved to clicking and moving around. And again, compared to Touch ID, compared to Samsung's fingerprint scanner, it's very quick and probably one of the best on the market. HTC has always had a really great audio performance. It's had boom sound speakers in the past, usually top and bottom, giving great front-facing sound, but in this case, they've gone because they needed to worry more about the design. But that doesn't mean that the audio isn't great. There's a digital audio amplifier inside, which means that tunes just sound louder, they sound better, so whether it's Spotify, whether it's music, everything's louder and a bit richer. There's also upscaling, so that even if your music isn't high res and got loads and loads of bit rates in it, it actually sounds just as good. So HTC's worked really hard on making that happen. It's a shame the music player itself has disappeared, so instead we've got Google Play Music, which you know I'm not a massive fan of. I'd, I'd rather that it was actually just a dedicated audio performer and it could just play your own music, but with this you've got the choice to scale and stream and everything like that, so it's not a bad idea, but it could be better. In terms of battery performance, again, HTC has dropped the ball a little bit here. It could be a really, really great performing phone because it's got Android Marshmallow, it's got Doze Mode, it's got things that can actually help extend the battery. But you know what they did? They put a really small battery in there just to make the thing thinner. Uh, it's really disappointing because, again, if you use Android 6, you can have a really great long-lasting phone. But again, HTC has fallen back to its old ways and gone for a, a low-lasting battery, which is really a shame to see. Given how thin this is, it's actually amazing that it gets to the evening at all. But it will last you most of the day and you'll probably need to reach for a charger about 7 or 8 if you want to have a night out, but in short, it could be a lot better and HTC needs to think about that when the One M10 turns up. So we're here, we are outside. We're here to test out the HTC One A9 camera, looking at it right here. It's a 13 megapixel sensor, it's got a raw support, optical image stabilisation, HTC really needs this camera to be good because the camera on the One, 8, the One M9 just wasn't up to scratch. It was a 20.9 megapixel sensor and everyone thought, you know what, loads of pixels, really great. But in term, in truth, it wasn't really that good. It just came out a little bit washed out, a little bit, I don't know, it's just something that wasn't quite there when you compare it to the Galaxy S6, etc. So the HTC One A9 really needs to step up. 
And spec-wise, it's pretty good. 30 megapixels is definitely enough to take a good picture. And from just snapping around, it seems very quick. The autofocus is good. Overall, I think it's gonna be a good camera, but we need to test it out and see a little bit more about what it can really do. As you can see, the lighting is a little bit lower, but that's actually perfect for this camera because HTC says this camera can excel in low light conditions, so it's the perfect test, really. Uh, as you can see, the camera mode itself, there's a lot of icons on the screen. We've got the grid on here to help us focus a little bit better, but taking general pictures is actually quite good. If you go down and go up, the focus eh, is not as good as you can see here through the pictures themselves. Again, the focus there, it's okay, but when you had it a little bit better focused, everything, as you can see, much nicer, everything's clean, looks really good. Now, if we go out and actually try zooming itself, the battery's a little bit low there, so that the flash isn't working. Again, it looks really clear. Uh, if you go in there and have a look at the actual picture itself, really good, actually much better than we'd expect. So I'm just gonna flip to the One M9 now, which is the, obviously the predecessor to this camera. As you can see, the screen LCD rather than AMOLED, so it looks a little bit more washed out, but it's quick, but the pictures just don't look as good, unfortunately. And if you go bring it down, bring it up, try and get the autofocus. Again, it's a little bit washed out, and as you can see with the pictures, there's just, there's just too much noise, it's too much over-processing. Again, if we zoom in, this is supposed to have a better sensor, it's 20.9 megapixels. Again, low light wise, it's just not as impressive. We just, we, we'd rather see this better, and that's what HTC's tried to do with the One A9. So, while actual normal mode is quite good, there's actually pro mode on here as well. So pro mode gives you just control over everything. You've got white balance, you've got exposure, you've got the macro mode, or focal length, sorry. And then actually the focal length is really good. If you're getting in really close, you can have a really good close control. And then changing the white balance as well, if you really mess around with this, you can get some really interesting shots. So pushing that right up, getting some overexposure. Again, it takes a little while because you've pushed that quite hard. But overall, you can, you can really play around with this and get some good stuff. Now that was in raw mode. You can do that again in JPG, which is just your standard JPEG. Again, that's a lot quicker as you can see. It just, it works much more smoothly. So say we put that into raw mode, which as, as we know, raw, raw mode is basically just your professional. It gives you all the information, gives you a massive file size, and it's just the best way to take photos, really, if you can have the option available. So take that, as you can see, taking a while to process, opening the gallery itself. You can then hit raw, and it will try and enhance it for you. This can take a little while, as it says on the, on the screen, and that's because we've got a uh, Snapdragon 617 chipset on there. And that will, uh, it's mid-range, it's not quite high-end enough, uh, and that can take a little bit longer to enhance your photos. Usually it gets to 20%, and then it jumps all the way up to 70%, and it's normally done. So fingers crossed that happens any second now. There we go. And you can see the enhancement itself makes quite a big difference. It's taken down on the oversaturation, just brings the best out of it. It's probably one of the best features of the HGC 1A9, and it's locked away right at the bottom, so it's a shame to see it there, but at least it is there. So we can save that, put it into the gallery, and we're back into the main camera with a couple of extra swipes. So really, the HTC One A9 has got a great camera. It's, it works really well. There's loads of different modes to play with. And it's a good snapper, and it's what HTC needed to do for its cameras. It needed to make it a really good option and just something that took good pictures in most lighting conditions. So that's the HTC One A9. The key question, should you buy it? In short, well, it depends what you really want out of a phone. I mean, it's a really great Android phone in terms of the power, the fact it's googly and it's got loads of great things like the camera, but it does look a lot like an iPhone, which to some people is going to be a real problem. So if you want a phone that's got a good camera, very slim line and an OK battery, then this is probably the phone for you. Does it get an A9 out of 10? Probably not, more than A8 perhaps. But in short, it's a good phone. It's just not the great phone we want HTC to make. Does it look too much like an iPhone? Do you want to see more? Should it have a bigger battery, better camera? All of that. So let us know below in the comments and you can subscribe somewhere along here and just really get involved and let us know what you want to see from the next HTC phone.